may be the Marine's heavy lifter. But in the long history of brute strength on rails, it's muscle machines like Union Pacific's 4000 series of steam locomotives and today's AC 6000 diesels that get the job done. In June of 2004, the Antonov 225 set a new commercial payload record by carrying 247 metric tons of construction equipment from Prague, Czech Republic to Tashkent, Uzbekistan. Today's giant locomotives are the latest muscle machines to power the railroad industry. When British engineer Richard Trevithick built the first practical steam locomotive in 1804, he started the industry on a fast track to building them bigger and bigger. During the steam era, this drive toward mammoth engines reached its zenith with Union Pacific's Big Boy 4000 series, the largest steam locomotives ever built. Well, the Big Boy was 132 feet 9 inches from coupler to coupler. It's about 16 feet 2 inches tall, about 10 feet, uh, close to 11 feet wide. It weighed uh, 1.2 million pounds, which is 600 tons when it was fully loaded with coal and water ready for the road. First put in operation in 1941, the big boys were built to pull heavy freight trains through the steep mountain passes of the Rockies. Whenever they pulled into town, they drew an admiring crowd. The ground would literally shake when a big boy rolled by, so they were very impressive machines to watch. Designed and constructed by the American Locomotive Company of Schenectady, New York, the big boy presented its builders with some major engineering challenges. Because of its enormous proposed length, with 16 wheels attached to a rigid frame, it would be impossible for it to stay on track while navigating sharp corners. It just wouldn't be flexible enough. To solve this problem, it was decided to make the locomotive articulated meaning it would have two engines connected by a hinge pin between them. Both engines would be served by a single boiler. When negotiating a curve, the front engine would be able to swing out freely around the curve, and then the back engine would follow. Supplying fuel to the giant locomotive also posed a problem. The tender of the big boy was designed to hold 28 tons of coal and 24,000 gallons of water, and obviously a locomotive that big burned an enormous amount of coal and water in a trip up the mountains pulling a heavy train. Typically it would burn about 8 to 10 tons of coal in an hour and go through about 8 to 10,000 gallons of water in an hour. Shoveling 8 to 10 tons of coal an hour was more than any human could do, so there's a mechanical stoker in the engine. It's actually a, an Archimedes screw, and the screw is driven by a little small two-cylinder steam engine that sits in the tender and the fireman controls the speed of that screw and that pushes the coal into the firebox. The firebox itself was of epic proportions. Well, the firebox was one of the biggest ever put on a steam locomotive, which is fitting for a locomotive the size of the big boy. It's about 20 feet long, about eight feet wide inside. There was a, literally an inferno inside a big boy firebox. Built at a cost of $265,000 in 1941, which would be $5 million today, the giant engine delivered all the power its designers had promised. The uh, big boy produced in excess of 6,000 horsepower, and this was an exceptional amount of horsepower for the time, particularly for a steam engine. It also delivered speed that would be impressive even today. The speed of this locomotive was governed by the amount of tonnage that was tied onto the back end, but it could do in excess of 80 miles an hour. Yet for all its power, by 1960, the age of the steam locomotive had come to an end, and even the incredible big boy was forced into retirement. Well, steam engines were phased out really because uh, better, more efficient technology came along. And the diesel engine is better economically, and it was a lot easier to maintain. Today, there's a massive diesel locomotive that surpasses even the big boy. It's General Electric's AC6000. The AC6000 behind me is one of the largest locomotives on the rails today. It's 76 feet long, it's 16 feet high, and it's 10 and a half feet wide. The locomotive with a full load of fuel weighs 425,000 pounds or 212 tons.
this $2 million giant is quantum leaps ahead of the big boy in terms of technology. The AC6000 is powered by one large 16-cylinder diesel engine. The diesel engine produces 6,000 horsepower for traction. That's power that goes down to the rails. Everything about the engine is huge. To put things in perspective, I've got two different pistons for you to look at. This is a piston out of a modern Class 8 over-the-road truck engine, the kind you'd see racing down the interstate highway. This piston will produce 112 horsepower in that engine. By comparison, this is a piston out of the GE AC6000 engine. This piston in that engine will produce 375 horsepower. Although called a diesel locomotive, the engine is really a combination of power plants. Most people don't understand that a diesel locomotive is actually a diesel electric locomotive. The diesel engine produces horsepower and it drives an alternator which produces electrical energy. That electrical energy is then controlled and fed down to six traction motors, one on each axle, and that's where the pulling power actually is produced. The locomotive uses AC, or alternating current traction motors, which are very efficient and reduce wheel slippage significantly. In the world of railroading, wheel slippage is to be avoided because it reduces speed and power. By using separate AC motors on each axle of the locomotive and monitoring them through a central control computer system, the designers have ingeniously and significantly improved the train's traction, a key ingredient to the rail giant's success. So each of the six axles on the AC6000 is controlled individually from the other five. In that manner, when one wheel has a tendency to slip, it can be controlled and the other five axles can pick up some of the load temporarily until the locomotive passes across that slippery section of track. There are only 106 of these Titans operating around the world today. They are the locomotives that are called in when only the biggest and the strongest can get the job done.